We're showcasing the greatest all time West Indies test 11 from the fearsome pace of Malcolm Marshall to the indomitable spirit of Vivian Richards. Mark, thank you for joining me, brother. How are you doing? Night now, Bill. Thanks for having me back on the reverse school. Very excited. Greatest West Indies 11. We're going to do this in order of the batting order. Let's start with number one, man. Yes, we're going to start with Gordon Grenick. Destructive, powerful strike of the cricket ball. Had a dismissive square cut. Drive a pull. Hit the ball down the ground on both sides of the pitch. The highest test score of 226. When it's played 108 test matches, 16 not out, 75, 58 runs. Average of 40. 4.72, 19th centuries, 34 half centuries, and 96 catches. Others to consider that was Desmond Haynes, Conrad Hunt, and Roy Fredericks. Since Greenwich was one of the most dominant batsmen for a long period of time in West Indies cricket, I went with Gordon Greenwich. Yeah, Gordon Greenwich is a sweet pick, man. I think he was one of West Indian great. Gordon Greenwich, number one. His partner, Mark, number two. Do you want to let the viewers know who his opening partner will be? I went with Josh Headley. He was the man who kept the innings together. The West Indies back then was very vulnerable. Collapse it. George Headley was the man. He batted a three or four, but very capable. His technique and style allow him to be an opening batsman as well. So, 22 matches, 2,190 runs, four not outs, best of 270 not out, average of 60.83, 10 centuries and five half centuries. I have George Headley opening the batting with Gordon Grenning. Let's move on to our number three, man. Who are we going with on first down? Yes, I'm going to go with Sir Vivian Richard the master blaster one of the greatest of all times batsman aggressive batsman by nature played 121 test matches 8,000 540 runs, 12 not outs, 291 best, average of 50.23, 24 centuries, 45 half centuries. The good thing about Viv Richards, he was all trying to keep, take the game forward, trying to look for win, always trying to put West Indies in a winning position, always trying to dominate the bowling. If it was a, a position where you had to consolidate with losing quick wickets, Viv would walk to the crease and try to fight fire with fire. That was the thing with Viv Richards. He wasn't always a pretty batsman. Some say played across the line, but he had such a great eyes and good hand-eye coordination that it made up for his technical things at time. They tell you not to do when coaching, playing across the line, playing premeditated, for example. But the best of the best players, that's exactly what they do because they have such great hand-eye coordination. They can premeditate because they can read the game, right, first of all. And secondly, they're able to see the ball, hit the ball, keeping it as simple as it is to their strengths. So that's what he possessed, man, Sir Viv. He was able to just play fearless, walk out there, he was the man when he was batting. Nobody could really stop him. That, that's a perfect example of when you say a batsman or a person yeah. should believe in himself. He always believed in himself. You know, he always believed he was the best. His ability to just dominate the best bowlers of his time without a helmet was a testament to his skill and bravery. So he had a big impact, bigger than a lot of players could achieve within their cricketing careers. He achieved it with just ease and class and doing it his own way. Let's move on to our number four. Who's who's coming in at second down? Yes, Brian Lara comes in at number four. Great batsman from Trinidad and Tobago, master of concentration. The man loved to bat, loved occupying the crease. You know, when he was unsung, he was unstoppable. 131 matches, 11,953 runs. That's a record for West Indies. Six not outs. The best of 400 not outs. Average of 52.88. 34 centuries, 48 half centuries, and 164 catches. So even so, if he was a top batsman he was a very good catcher as well in the slips brian lara one of the greatest batsmen of all time for west indies what more can i say about lara yeah lara's flair and elegance at the crease combined with his ability to play match winning innings under pressure cemented his status as one of the game's greatest batsmen time and again and, and just carried the team on his shoulders when played a couple innings that stood out for me was that 277 at sydney when he got run out his match winning 153 versus australia 19 99 in Bridgetown Barbados. He's 213 in Kingston, Jamaica. Sabina Pla. He's 226 versus Pakistan in Pakistan. You know, those are some great innings that stood out for me for Brian Lara. That was our number four, Brian Lara. Let us know what you guys think of these first four picks so far. Make sure to again check out our links in the description for the reverse scoop shop that will support our cricket here, youth cricket development, where we have a partnership with New Milford Cricket Club. A portion of it goes back to New Milford Cricket. Check out the shop. 
shop, check out our membership that's recently gone live. You'll see a join button. Mark, let's get into number five, man. Who's coming in at number five? Yeah, I'm going to go with Sir Frank Worrell as a captain and batting at number five, 51 test matches, 3,860 runs, best of 261, an average of 49.48, nine centuries, 22 half centuries, nine not outs and 43 catches. Also, also was a, a handy left arm medium pace bowler and a slow left arm as well. He picked up 69 test wickets and best of seven for 70. The first black man to captain West Indies in a full test series. Worrell was instrumental in fostering team unity, promoting the Caribbean flair in cricket. His leadership during the 1960-1961 series against Australia is particularly, as you mentioned in prior videos, Mark is celebrated for the sportsmanship and competitive spirit. And it's remembered as one of the greatest series in cricket history. In our last video, Mark, on greatest captains of all time, and we ranked him as number one, I, I want to ask you now, because it may come up. Clive Lloyd versus the Frank Worrell debate. What separates these two apart? So, so Frank Worrell was a lead of men, so was Clive Lloyd, but so Frank Worrell was credited for really integrating the Caribbean, the, the, the smaller islands, along with the bigger islands. The, the smaller islands are the Windward Islands and the Leeward Islands. He got them integrated into our first class system and he even said in a statement back in the 60s that in the future, West Indies would have to look for their best cricketers from the smaller islands, and which is really happening currently. Look at, we have Casey Carty, right? He's from St. Martin. We have Alec Akunez, Kavin Hodge from Dominica. Those are from smaller islands as well, you know? So that's uh, some vision so Frank will have. And different than that, tactically, he was a very good skipper. He was the one who really put West Indies on the map as well. I would always give him credit over Sir Clive Lloyd. Not to take away anything from Clive Lloyd. Clive Lloyd was a man who was very instrumental in producing our four-pronged pace attack and aggressive form of cricket. But again, Clive Lloyd had a very good team. He had very good batsmen he had a full more wrong team very good batsman very good bowler back in the 60s Frank Warrell didn't wasn't so lucky he had to get the best out of the players and most of those players wasn't superstar if you look at the West Indies team from the 70s to the 80s majority of the team was superstars right back in the if you look at the compare the team from back into 1960 to 1970 most of these guys was not superstars that's one of the reasons why I went with uh, Frank Warren. but it's debatable both men tactically was very good captains it, it's just a matter of preference or choice thank you mark for that let's move on to our number six man who's gonna be i think this is probably was your easiest pick on this lineup next coming up mark let the viewers know man who's coming in at number six yes yeah, so so gary sobers is my number six three and one cricketer bowls fast medium bold left arm author that bold left arm wrist sprint very instrumental in west indies he was a man who really balanced the team a very good Feeler close to the wickets. Look at some of his stats. His first test century was 365. Followed in his next five test matches, he got five centuries as well. His best, second best knock, or Sir Bradman said was his greatest knock, was the 254 versus the rest of the world back in 1971. I have that video. I watch it over and over. Sobers played 93 test matches, 8,032 runs, 21 not outs, best of 365 not out, average of 57.7, 26 centuries. 30 half centuries, 100 catches, 235 wickets, best of 6 for 73, and he had 6 5 form. What more can I say about this great cricketer? He comes in at number 6, he balances the team, he's a, a genuine batman, and he's a genuine bowler. So if the skipper is having some difficulty, the skipper could turn to him to bowl some left arm medium or some slow left arm orthodox or some Chinaman to help out. So that's my pick at number six, Sir Gary Silvers. As often hailed as the greatest all-rounder cricket has ever seen with a test batting average of above 57, 8,000 runs, 235 wickets with his versatile bowling. Again, as you mentioned, Mark, left arm, fast, medium, slow left arm orthodox and wrist spin and be able to command and control all these three separate skill sets in addition to his field and his great batting skill. His skills were unparalleled and his record breaking 365 not out in a test inning stood for 36 years, a testament to his dominance. Sir Gary Sobers, again, one of the greatest cricketers of all time, comes in at number six. Number seven, this is usually the keeper spot. Who are we going with on number six? Yes, I'm going to go with so, uh, Clyde Walcott, uh, a very good batsman with a keeper from Barbados. Played 44 test matches, 3,798 runs. His best was 220, an average of 56 Point six eight, fifteen centuries and 14 half centuries, 53 catches and 11 stumping. He also took 11 test wickets, bowling a little medium pace. So complete all-rounder coming in at seven. Imagine 
your wicket keeper averaging 56.68. That alone speaks volume. Very handy with the gloves, his glove work. You know, if the team needed help, he can come and bowl at a medium pace as well. My number seven, so Clyde Walcott, one of the three W. Yeah, absolutely, man. As part of the three W, Walcott was a phenomenal bats, capable wicket keeper with a batting average of, as you mentioned, Mark, 56.68 in test cricket. His power hitting and consistency were crucial for the West Indies. Walcott's ability to combine wicket keeping duties with prolific run scoring added significant depth to the team which was lacking back in those days. Clyde Walcott, number seven. Who are we going with on number eight now, Mark? I think we're getting into the bowlers. Malcolm Marshall at number eight. Malcolm Marshall, open chest action, quick run up to the wicket, bowling with great pace. He produced his best at Old Trafford. He was bowling cutters, swingers, pitching the ball up. He got seven for 22 with a broken hand back in the day in England. Marshall was an artist, very skillful bowler, could read the pitch, read the atmosphere, read the basic the environment during a match and adjust himself to perform well for West Indies during that match. He played 81 test matches, 376 test wickets, best 7 for 22, average of 20.94, an economy rate of 2.68. He had 22 fifers. As a batsman, he scored 1,810 runs. His best of 92. At number eight, you still have the bowler who is capable of batting coming in at number eight. Malcolm Marshall, the artist, the masterclass bowler. On so many occasions, bowling West Indies to, vic to victory. So I have him at number eight. Malcolm Marshall, with a combination of speed, skill, and intelligence, was arguably the greatest fast bowler of his generation. His legacy is not just the 376 test wickets, but fearlessness and competitiveness he brought to the field. And he was just a player who was always up for the battle and, and outthought the batsman and outsmarted the opposition. Clever operator and a legendary player. So Malcolm Marshall, the great Malcolm Marshall, comes in at number eight for us. Who's our number nine, Mark? Let's move on to number nine. Top three spots. Yes, number nine is off spinner landscape. Split 79 test matches. The first bowler to break the 300 barrier for the West Indies. That was a test record. He had 309 test wickets for 8,000. 989 runs, a best of 8 for 38, average of 29.09, economy rate of 2.26, he got 18 fifers. Just want to give you a little stats with landscape. Back in the, he got, he really was into his own 1960 to 1962. That's the time he was really being, understanding the skills and he was bowling well for West Indies back in those days. But in 1963, he played a match against India, the toy India team. He had remarkable figures of 53.3 overs, 37 maidens, 38 runs, 8 wickets. And all 8 wickets came in a 15 over spell for just 6 runs. The man had skill, guile, all different variations. Landscapes comes in at number 9. He was known for his extraordinary control and ability to extract, turn, and bounce from any surface. His economy and consistency made him crucial part of that West Indian bowling attack, providing, again, balance and depth. So Lance Gibb, as a spinner, was, uh, again, a no-brainer pick for us. Pick number 10, who are we going with on number 10? So currently, Ambrose, 98 test matches, 405 wickets, best of 8 for 45, average of 20.99, Economy rate of 2.30, 22 fifers. He took 18 catches. Ambrose was one of the most lethal in his generation. His 7 for 1 versus Australia stands out at the Waka. His 6 for 24 versus England at Port of Spain 1994, when England was dismissed for 46, stand out. And he had a beautiful celebration. You could see the passion and pride in his celebration. A deadly Yorker in the early 80s, late 80s, like 88, 89, he had a deadly Yorker. Ambrose always produced match winning spells for West Indies. That's why I have him coming in at number 10. Standing at 6'7", Curtly Ambrose was a towering figure who could intimidate batsmen with his height alone. His precise line and length combined with his ability to extract bounce made him one of the most economical and effective bowlers in cricket history. And again, his partnership with Courtney Walsh formed one of the most feared bowling duos in that era. Now we're going to go on to number 11, but before we do that, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, make sure to check out a reverse scoop shop and check out the Caribbean man cricket band. Mark, let's go on to our number 11 man. Who are we going with on number 11? Yes, I'm going with Michael Holden, Whispering Death, the Rolls Royce of fast bowling. You know, had a very smooth, nice 
rhythmic approach to the crease, you know, beautiful bowling action. He played 60 test matches, 249 wickets, best of eight for 92, average of 23.6 I, economy 2.79, 13 fifers and 22 catches in 1976 and a dead Oval pit, flat dead pit. Holden produced 14 for 149 career best. Michael Holden, my number 11. Well, Andy Roberts, the 12th man, just wanted a special mention here. If you haven't checked out our top 10 West Indies captains of all time video, you'll see it right here on the screen. Check it out. And until next time, Mark Audain and Nabil Khan from the Reverse Scoop signing off. Have a great night, everyone. Take care.